Hi guys, welcome to our next discussion on the next phylum that we're going to talk about, the echinoderms, echinodermata. Phylum echinodermata are known as the spiny skinned animals. What you're looking at is a picture of a purple sea urchin or Basia punctulata, pretty common around Connecticut and south of here. Um, we'll, we'll get into some of the other ones in a few minutes. Okay, so echinoderm. What's an echinoderm? Well, like I said, they're spiny skinned animals. They have a, a mesodermal endoskeleton, which means that they have a skeleton in between um, tissues. Okay, they call it a test. It, it's the shell, but they call it the test. Okay, they all have, um, most of them have five part radial symmetry, which means that it's kind of like the spokes on a, on a wheel, um, but if there was five spokes so so we're talking about um, when we talk about echinoderms a sea star is a is an example of an echinoderm and if you think about even Patrick's star right there are typically five or multiples of five rays or arms on a sea star okay on other organisms, there are mul there could be multiples of five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and so on uh, arms. So so they typically have five part radial symmetry. Um, they have what's called a water vascular system, which means they kind of suck in water and then they use it to um, do a lot of different life functions. So we're, we're going to investigate that in a couple of minutes, but it's pretty pretty interesting they have most of them have tube feet these suction cup structures that I'll show you a little video of in a few seconds but they they have these tube feet which are really cool there's no segmentation there's no head even though they're kind of um, advanced as far as animals go they they don't they don't have nor do they need a head area um, the water vascular system contains a network of fluid filled canals leading to these things called tube feet. Let me show you what tube feet look like. Um, hang on one second. Here we go. So, so if you look here, these are the tube feet. Let me see if I can. These little structures here. Oh, come on. Are the tube feet. See this this little tube? That's a tube foot. And they help the animal to move around. Okay. Pretty pretty cool little structures. Um you can see them moving. That's what the tube foot on a on a that particular sea star, it looks like disaster, but it's hard to tell. Um yeah. See the little tube feet going? Pretty cool. And that's how they move around. And that's how they eat. And that's how they distribute things within their bodies. So next time you're at the beach and you see a sea star, if you flip it over, you'll see those little tube feet. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, back to me. Come on. Back to me. Okay. So the water vascular system, like I said, is involved in lots of things, feeding, respiration, internal transport. It's how they get stuff around, elimination of weights, movement, all kinds of things. All echinoderms are marine, which means there are no freshwater echinoderms. There are no terrestrial or land-based um, echinoderms. They need the seawater to work their water vascular system. Vary in appearance quite a bit, but they're fairly consistent in their builds. So we'll get to those in a few minutes. But there are carnivores that use their tube feet to open up, typically open up like a clam or a scallop, and then they slip their stomach inside the clam, which is kind of interesting because they, they actually push their stomach out of their mouth and digest the clam from inside the clam. Pretty neat. Um, and then they digest the clam within within its own shell. Let me let me show you another little video here. 
quickly of a sea star eating a mussel. So it's time lapse. It's, it's it moves pretty quick, but they don't really move that fast in real life. Obviously, brittle stars move pretty quickly, but these guys are not. Okay, so here you see um, they. We'll talk about it in a minute, but they do have eyes. Um, well, they have light sensitive spots, um, and they find a muscle chemically and when they do they surround it with the arms I think this is pretty cool this is Pizaster by the way this is Pacific there's the tube feet they kind of hold on and they open up. They help when the clam or mussel opens up a little bit, they hold it open. And then this is the stomach coming out of the mouth into the mussel. The stomach is this white, filmy thing, really membranous. And then it, it secretes digestive enzymes that eat the mussel from inside the mussel. That's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing how they got the, the video. Okay. All right, so back to me. Um, herbivores use the, um, um, they, they, they have these, these jaws called Aristotle's lantern that that scrape off algae off the rocks. Let me see if I can get uh, another video. I know. Sorry. Um, but they're pretty cool videos. So what you're seeing here is Aristotle's lantern in action. This is Aristotle's lantern. So that's Aristotle's lantern right there. And you can see the jaws are kind of opening and closing. They call it Aristotle's lantern because when you look at the whole structure, it looks like the things that they used to hang off of street poles, you know, that, that would light the roads and things. They call those Aristotle's lanterns. Okay. Okay. So filter feeders, we're, we're going to see, have these flexible arms that capture plankton. Detritus feeders, like sea cucumbers, bulldoze through the, through the sediment and take in food and sand and digest the, the organic parts and pass out the sand to what's left. Usually they have a complete digestive system, so they do have a stomach, they do have intestine, they do have digestive glands, and they do have an, well, they do have an anus. Okay. Um, the re as far as respiration goes, the tube feet are the main respiratory surface, although they also have these things called skin gills. It's kind of like a tube, but without the little suction cup at the end. Okay, uh, and I'll show you some pictures in a few minutes. Um, because respiration, removal of me metabolic waste, and things occur through the skin gills, they don't really need a respiratory system. They, they, their, their tube feet and skin gills act like the alveoli of our lungs. Um, as far as internal transport goes, um, they're shared by a bunch of systems. They don't really need anything crazy. The nutrients are distributed by the digestive glands and the fluids in the body cavity. They're in the water, so they, they, um, they don't really have a problem with distributing materials. Solid wastes go through the anus. Brittle stars don't have an anus, but mo most of the echinoderms do. Um, Ammonia and cellular metabolic pee are released through the tube feet and skin gills. Okay, as far as response goes, they have a simple nervous system. They have a nerve ring that surrounds the mouth, and then then it they're scattered sensory cells, and there are sensory um, cells that go through the the rays. Starfish can have up to 200, 2,000 
eye spots on the tip of each arm. They, they don't really see an image. They see light and dark. They pretty much hang out in the dark most of the time. Okay. So there are five classes of Echinodermata. Um, let's talk about them. The first one is Asteroidea. That's the sea stars. It says starfish here. The proper term is sea stars. Everybody knows sea starfish, but, but the proper term is sea star because it's not really a fish. Okay. Um, Ophiroidea are the brittle stars. Okay. Echinoidea are the sea urchins and sand dollars and sea biscuits. Holothoroidea are the sea cucumbers. And then crinoidea are the sea lilies and feather stars and stuff. Let me show you some pictures of each. As far as asteroidea goes, the, there's, there's two, um, there's, there's two different sea stars here, believe it or not. This is this is a, a little one. This is Asterius vulgaris. It's the purple sea star. These are both around here, um, but but this is kind of like my my hang in there picture because this sea star is probably this big and the clam was like this big and he was still trying to eat it, which cracks me up. Okay, um, so this other one here is is Asterius forbesi, the Forbes sea star, and I want you to see a couple of things. First of all, this structure, most people think, oh, it's the eye. No, uh, it's not the eye. It's called the madreporite, and it's, it's um, scientists say it's the sieve plate. It's where water comes into the body of the animal. It's, a, it's a, kind of like a little filter pour that lets water in, but it filters out all the gunk. Okay? So, so that's the madreporite. Um, let me, let me, I could write these things down. This is the. Madreporite. Okay. Um, if you look right here, these structures that are all over the place are the skin gills. Okay. Um, another thing that that um, echinoderms have is is they have these little structures. See these little like jaws looking things? Those are called pedicillaria. Pedicillaria are um, used by many echinoderms. Some of them are, have venom, but um, it's used by many echinoderms to hold things onto their, onto their bodies to kind of blend in with the surroundings. They're used as protection. They're used to manipulate things around them. They're pretty cool. Okay. Echinoidea are the sand dollars, sea urchins, and things like that. Here's Arbacea punctulata. You saw this picture in the beginning. This is the purple uh, sea urchin. It's common around here. They call it a purple sea urchin, but most of the time it looks kind of black to me. Okay. This is this is an interesting critter. This is the the animal with the longest scientific name this is the green sea urchin really common up north um they they use it for sushi if anybody's ever here of, heard of of uni uni is made from the the gonads of of these guys or the purple one over in california this is strongylocentrotus drobachiensis it is the green sea urchin pretty common in maine um, New Hampshire, you know, way north, okay? Um, the purple one, Strongylocentrotus purpuratus, is common in California, and they use both of them for, for sushi, but um, pretty cool critters too. Okay, when you think of a sand dollar, you, usually people think of them as these white things, but this is a live sand dollar, and you could tell because it's got the um, the little... The little fuzzies here are spines. Remember we said spiny skinned animals, so these are covered with spines. This is the sand dollar that's common around here. This is Echinorachneus parma. Um, pretty common in Rhode Island, Maine, Massachusetts, um, that kind of, you know, all around here. This is diadema. 
it's a it's a sea urchin that's down in I took this down in Bonaire. Let me show you a black one. This is diadema too. It's just a different color, um, and you can see they're pretty spiny. They they are um, pretty common, but those spines are pretty sharp, and they're also pretty brittle. So if you get it stuck in you, it's kind of hard to get it out with tweezers or whatever. Because if you try to grab it, it just crumbles. So they could be very, very painful, and some of them have a venom, so it could be problematic. Um, this is this is the West Indian egg sea urchin. It's um, take I took this one down in Bonaire too, kind of cute, but it also has those spines, um, and you can see the tube feet kind of sticking out. These are tube feet here. See all over here? Those are tube feet. Okay. Okay. Ophiuridia are the brittle stars and the basket stars and those kinds of things. Here's a basket star I took down in Bonaire. There they are around here, but here's a basket star I took down in Bonaire. Um, at night they open up like that, and what happens is they trap plankton as it passes through these these little arms. There are tube feet that kind of filter the water, and during the daytime they they coil up and they become almost invisible. They kind of hide. Um, here's a brittle star. They move pretty quickly. Very pretty critters. Um, that one's probably maybe that long. So he's not he's not huge, but very cool. And you can see certainly see the spines. Okay. Holothuridia are the sea cucumbers. This is a tiger tail sea cucumber. And you can see why they call it a tiger tail sea cucumber. That's probably four or five foot long. It's a, it's a good size sea cucumber. Uh, again, I took this in Bonaire. Uh, matter of fact, I took it in 2019 um, when, um, when I went with some friends. Here's another picture that I took in 2019. This is, a, this is called a donkey dung sea cucumber. Dung is poop, by the way. And it looks like donkey poop. Down in Bonaire, one of the one of the animals that run wild are the donkeys. It looks very much like donkey poop. So that's the donkey dung sea cucumber. Uh, this one is really cool. I took this last year again in 2019. Um, this is a chocolate chip sea cucumber. How cool is that? I just think it's cool. Um, as, as far as size goes, that was probably probably about as big around as my arm and you know it was, it was good size okay crinoidea are the sea lilies and feather stars this is when i went down to the florida keys uh, a few years ago i saw this critter and i thought to myself that looks a lot like a crinoid but i wasn't sure so i asked and sure enough and i looked it up and sure enough it is a feather star it's a crinoid um and if you get really close, let me let me see if I can. So so um, I want you to kind of picture something here. If you if you look at at let's just take this for a minute. If you just look at this area and we get really close and blow it up, okay, it would look like this. And what I want you to see here is that. Here are the tube feet, and see how they're they're okay. So let me just see if I can find a good one. Okay, so here are the tube feet, and see how they're facing each other. And so any particulates, any plankton that would that would go in between them, so plankton that goes in between them gets caught by the tube feet, and then these curl back up and bring it to the mouth which come on which is down in the in the base here pretty cool critters pretty cool critters all right so that's it for echinoderms thank you very much i will see you soon